آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربي والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم أن اعبدوا الله واجتنبوا الطاغوت إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وحبيبه إمام المتقين سيد العابدين وخير الخاشعين أرسله الله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره الكافرون وصلاة الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحابته ومن اهتدى بهديه ودعا بدعوته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen By the grace of Allah By the favor of Allah Allah have also Made us to meet today Here in, For another lesson And this is Solely from the blessing of Allah My dear brothers and sisters And Youngsters Without Allah permission If Allah would not permit us We will never do anything. The doer of everything is Allah. Allah does and we, we cannot do. Allah is the doer. He has the whole power for everything to be done. And He controls the life. The life is in His hand. Fi Allah on His you know, hand and يَتَسَرَّفُ بِهَا كَمَا يَشَاءُ And he can, you know, use it, everything the way he wants. So inshallah today, we are going to also uh, continue the book of Khudul Aqidatik. Take your belief from the Sunnah, from the Kitab, that is the book of Allah, and from Sunnah to Sahiha from the uh, Sunnah that is authentic. So this is I, our fourth question, my dear brothers, let's answer. This fourth question is so, so important also that it will show us how far Allah, Allah's slaves can go, how far Allah's slaves can reach. The question is, ما هو الإحسان في العبادة؟ what is it? What is this ihsan in worshipping? In the worshipping of Allah, what is ihsan? What is the meaning of this ihsan? What this ihsan is all about? This is a very good question. This is our belief. So it's one of our belief. This is when this hadith or this question, subhanAllah, came from, as we all know, from the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, when he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam, sitting down with the Sahaba. He was sitting down with the Sahaba and the Sahaba was surprised. He was with white clothes, with black hair and no, no suffer or no traveling would be seen from him and nobody would know because if they would be knowing they say the Arab if someone knows someone comes then they will be standing and say saluting him or saying salam to him but he said لا يعرف أحد منا حتى جلس إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم until he sat down with Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم فَأَسْنَدَ رُكْبَتِهِ إِلَى رُكْبَتِهِ He put his tie on the tie of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم وَوَضَعَ كَفَيْهِ عَلَى فَخِدَيْهِ And he put his two hands on his thigh 
Then he start asking questions. He said, Ya Muhammad, he said, Oh Muhammad, what is Islam? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa answered about Islam. And then he asked about what is Iman? And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said the six pillars of Islam and the five pillars of the six pillars of Iman and the five pillars of Islam. Then the third question he asked was Ihsan? What is Ihsan? That's exactly this question now. Then the answer is Al Ihsanu Huwa Muraqabatullahi Ta'ala Fil Ibadati قال الله تعالى الذي يراك حين تقوم وتقلبك في الساجدين الذي يراك حين تقوم وتقلبك في الساجدين الإحسان ورز إحسان إحسان إيز هو مراقبة الله تعالى is the awareness that Allah is watching us and everyone on all his creations. Ihsan is that muraghaba, that, that awareness that Allah is watching me. In my ibadah, whatever ibadah I'm doing, he sees me, he hears me, and he knows what I'm doing. So all my ibadah is that I have to be aware that Allah is watching me. That Allah is listening to me. And that Allah is no, is, does know what I'm doing. So that's the muraghaba in ibadah. That, that awareness, that awareness that Allah is watching me. So I have to be Respecting Allah, that Allah is watching me, so that I have to, I have to, I have to show my goodness, and I have to show, and I have to make Allah contented on my ibadah. That feeling and that awareness is called. Ihsan. And that is the highest daraja. First Islam, then Iman, then Ihsan. Ihsan is the, high, the third daraja or the third rank of a believers, higher than the believer. So Allah says, Al Ihsanu, then the question is Al Ihsan. Ihsan means, Huwa Muraqabatullah is that awareness of, of the person that Allah is watching and hearing and knows what I'm doing Ta'ala fil ibadah with, uh, with ibadah, with worshipping, with all what I'm doing all the ibadah that I'm doing that Allah is raqib and Allah says in the Quran inna Allah kana alaykum raqiba raqiba means Allah is watching on you Allah is watching on you. So my dear brothers, Allah says, just for a proof from this ayah, the proof of this uh, ihsan is that Allah says, الَّذِي يَرَاكَ حِينَ تَقُومُ الَّذِي يَرَاكَ Allah is the one who is, who is looking at you, who is watching you. حِينَ تَقُومُ When you stand up. When you stand up, Allah is watching on you. وَتَقَلُّبَكَ فِي الْسَّاجِدِينَ And whenever you're changing your, your positions from standing up to sujood, from standing up to sujood and, and also and ruku, and all those different positions that you are, He is the one who seeing you, watching you. That means He is watching on what you're doing. So my dear brothers and sisters and Youngsters, Allah is watching on us all the time. All our actions are monitored by Allah. 
He is monitoring us as the as we saw this monitoring, uh, uh, you know, cameras we see uh, all over. What they're doing is they are watching and monitoring whatever the people are doing. What do you think the monitor of Allah is 24-7? Allah is monitoring us 24 hours and 7 days a week. And all the time, every second, every second of our life is monitored by Allah. At the same time, there is two angels on our right and left shoulder. That's writing down all the actions that we're doing, everything that we're doing. So from the hadith also, the Sheikh brought this hadith, which is the hadith that we talked about. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-ihsanu, ihsan means, an ta'budallaha ka'anna katarahu. Ihsan means that you worship Allah as though you are seeing Him. Ka'annaka tarahu as though you are seeing Him. Fa'il lam taku tarahu, fa'il lam taku tarahu. If you are not really, it, if it happens that you are not seeing Him, fa'innuhu yarak. He is seeing you, He is watching you. So either you worship Allah as you really you seeing Him, because He's see, if you if you if you imagine, for example, my brothers, that we are seeing Allah. If that level of iman will be developed, how much respect we will have for that Allah? If we don't see Him. He says he's seeing you. For sure, we all know that Allah, nothing will pass by without His watching, without His knowing, without His recording whatever we do. doing. So Ihsan means to worship Allah as you are seeing Him, and ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tarahu, as you are seeing Him, but if you are not, if it happens that you are not seeing him, he is watching on you. He is watching on you, my brothers. So how much, how much awareness do we have? How much awareness do we have that Allah is watching on us? And every second of it, as we Pass by the first question as we second of it that he created us so that only we do the right and we avoid the wrong. So that we satisfy Allah. Rida Allah. That's why the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, my dear brothers and sisters and youngsters, they, they satisfy and they pleased Allah. Allah want to please on us. But who did this? Who achieved this? The Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. Radiallahu anhum. Allah was pleased with them. Why? Because they did exactly this. They, they worship Allah with ihsan. They worship Allah as they are seeing Him. They worship Allah otherwise as He is seeing them. And they understood their purpose of life, which is to only worship Allah. And they understood that all what they have to do in their life is to please Allah. The pleasure of Allah. That is the whole purpose of our creation. So this is how Ihsan comes. And this is how the people and the believers, the true believers, will have such a fear. As I said, Abu Bakr was, was said to say, even if my right leg would be entering to the Jannah, my left leg still outside, I will not be saved from the punishment of Allah. Look at this. Look where this Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they are a human being like us. But the difference between us and them, my dear brothers and sisters and youngsters, is that they took seriously. 
They took seriously what they are created for. And they took seriously that Allah is watching on them. And they took seriously that they know that Allah can punish, that they know Allah can severely punish, and they scare, and they was fear of Allah, and they developed this consciousness and this awareness of Allah, so they developed taqwa. And by developing taqwa, they came to that point that they only do what Allah likes and they avoid all what Allah dislikes. This is, my dear brothers, about this lesson. And may Allah, we ask Allah to give us the understanding of this. And inshallah, after a little bit break, we'll come back and we'll continue this lesson bi idni Allah ta'ala inshallah until then assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh amana ar rasul bima unzila ilayhi min rabbi wal mu'minun kullun amana billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم أن اعبدوا الله واجتنبوا الطاغوت الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا مولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. My dear brothers and sisters and youngsters, mainly this is you know the reason why we speaking English is mainly that we are targeting those English speakers, especially the youth, the children in North America who have been in the in, inside. Inside, you know, an ocean, ocean of kufr, ocean of desires, ocean of temptations, ocean of, of lusts. And in order them to understand that they are Muslims, these temptations, these desires, this self the nafs will only going to put them or take them to to lose khasara and they're going to destroy this nafs destroyed most of the non-muslims they only follow the nafs and they follow what this desires is is asking them and they and they forgot about Allah. But the Muslim should have to come back to the turn to Allah and start pondering and contemplating about their creations. Wallahi, my dear brothers, we are not created for any other purpose. Wallahi, my dear brothers, death is about to to approach us anytime. It doesn't have no time, no place, no age, no color, no, no, no at all. Allah have created us so that we die. That's the whole purpose. And then the success and the failure will depend after death. Not before death. After death, my dear brothers and sisters and youngsters, we need to think. Allah has given us this power, this power of intellect to understand who we are. Especially we Muslims, we don't have to look, we don't have to look for, for, for answers. Allah has put all the answers for us in the Quran. Allah have put and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have answered all the questions of this life and hereafter. 
There is no system. There is no system. There is no system in this face of the earth that have given all precise answers for every questions of this life. Allah had given us all these ayats in front of us. We see, we see the universe. We see the sun coming from the east without no tiredness to the west. We see all this power of Allah. And we know there is none, no one, no one could challenge this Islam. No, no one could challenge the Quran of Allah, the book of Allah, the transcendent message of Allah. No one could, no one could, my dear brothers and sisters. Allah Himself says, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأَتُوا بِسُورَةٌ مِّنْ مِثْلِهِ فَأَتُوا بِسُورَةٌ مِّنْ مِثْلِهِ وَدْعُوا شُهَدَاكُمْ And call all your witnesses. إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ فَإِن كُنْتُ Allah is saying, if you have any doubt about what we have been sent down to our slave Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you have any, any doubt about it, and call all your, your witnesses. And call your witnesses if you're really saying the truth. So my dear brothers, Alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah, ala ni'mat al-Islam, Allah have given us this Islam and we owe to Allah, we owe to ourselves. And Allah is so merciful that He gave us this pure deen. This, this deen that Allah have completed for us. And He said, Today I have completed for you your deen, your way of life. Deen is, by the way, my dear brothers and sisters and youngsters, deen is a way of life, Wallahi. It's the way we should live our life. So Allah is saying, Today I have completed for you your deen, your way of life. وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي And I have pure, or I have put all my favors and graces on this deed. All my favors. وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي All my ni'mah. I have been put on this deed. وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ الدِّينَ This is the only choice that Allah has made for us. The only deen that is chosen for the whole humanity is Islam, my dear brothers and sisters and youngsters. So how lucky we are. But unfortunately what we need is to advise each other. To advise each other so that we come back to our deen. We to advise each other so that we learn about our deen. We advise each other so that we Amr bil ma'ruf wa nahi We will advise people about the good and also advise them not to do the bad. Wallahi, thumma wallahi, this life is so short, my dear brothers. We are going to leave so soon. We don't know. الأعمار أمتي بين الستين والسبعين قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. The the life span of my umma is between sixty and seventy, my dear brothers. How much is it sixty and seventy? And what is after it? An everlasting life. After this sixty to seventy years, there will be an everlasting life. That's the life we should target, my dear brothers. That's why we have to know our purpose in this life. That's why, my dear brothers and sisters and youngsters, this, our deen, we have, to, we have to stand up for our deen. In North America, our kids are dying every day, everywhere, with the gangs, with this, with this, with this you know, 
uh, evil environments. Our kids are dying every day and every night. They are with this substance abuse all, all, all over the world, all over the places. They are using drugs. You know why? Because the Muslims are not doing their job, my dear brothers. We are not doing our job. We are sleeping. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, Al-Nasu fi niyam yastayqiduna inda al-mawt. They are sleeping right now, but they're going to wake up when they die. Where, when are we going to wake up and, and, and try to be responsible for our communities, for our kids who are every day, every day changing? The environment is changing eh? because we, we, could not, we could not establish an environment. We could not establish an environment that's, that's seducive to them, an environment that attracts them. Because the environment of outside, of the, uh, the environment of the, uh, you know, the outside is always a kufr environment. It's an environment full of desires and temptations. So the only savior is Islam. The masajids, we have to call, we have to bring our kids to the masajids and teach them and, and train them and try our best. So my dear brothers, I will advise everybody, this book is a very important book. Your kids, they need this book. Your kids, they need to know about their belief. We only just did, did five of the questions. There is a lot to come. Please, I will recommend our plea with you to bring your children and try if you can to sit down for this program at least if they don't speak our our you know uh, native language like every other language if they don't speak and speak only english please try to make them sit down and listen to this lesson and follow and guide them because the parents are the one who's supposed to guide these children because we are responsible, kullukum ra'un wa kullukum masulun an ra'iyati. All of you are shepherds, and you will be responsible for what you, what you're being given a responsibility to. So I, 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 I would like to request from you, the elders, to bring your children down. Mainly, this book is going to help the children. The youngsters, those who have been be given mutashabihats, they've been given a doubt. Most of the university students, I know my brothers, for 35 years I was in Canada and I, 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 I used to do dawah in universities. Many of our children, we say they are in universities, but they already have been given a doubt about Islam. The non-Muslims are trying all their best to put doubts on our deen, to question and question and question that will make them, you know, to feel like doubt. So in order to save that, we need all of us, especially in North America, the brothers in the Da'is, all of you, my brothers, to try our best to teach our children. I know we are trying, but still there is a lot, a lot, a lot to do. Allahumma hadi al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat ya rahim al-Rahimin. Allahumma hadi hum ila siratik al-Mustaqim ya rahim al-Rahimin. ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحابته وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا سبحان ربك رب عزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين لا إله إلا الله لا معبود إلا هو محمد رسوله 
لا إله إلا الله لا معبود إلا هو محمد رسوله